Today, we're going to answer the question of if the CMS or the Serve 12 is objectively the best surgical kit for you. So, what's a surgical kit? Well, surgical kits allow you to restore a limb that's been blacked out or brought down to zero health points, something that for years we actually were not able to do in Tarkov. The surgery process is currently the longest healing animation in the game, and each time a limb is restored, it's brought back to having only one HP and the maximum number of health points that that limb can hold going forward is reduced. It's important to note that neither of the surgery kits can fix bleeds, so be careful to stop any bleeds that you may have before performing surgery, because at the time it takes to put the surgical kit away after surgery, that single point of health you restored to the blacked out limb could be lost almost instantly to that bleed, requiring you to perform surgery on that limb all over again. Now, no surgical kit in the game can heal a blacked out head or thorax, which can occur if either zone is brought down to zero health points due to a bleed. You won't die in that case, but those zones cannot be healed and taking even a single point of damage to those two zones when blacked will result in instant death. So it's important to keep in mind that while subjective discussions and debates can be fun, they rarely lead to a meaningful conclusion. But isn't the question of whether or not something is better than something else subjective? Why bother with the discussion then if it's all just down to personal opinion? Well. It's all about how you frame or qualify the question. Asking which one is best is ambiguous because best can mean different things to different people. Best is subjective, it's qualitative. If you wanna make an informed decision between multiple options and all you do is compare it qualitatively, you might as well be debating which color or flavor of ice cream is the best. There's really no right answer. Now, I find it most beneficial to first look at all of the considerations available to you and determine which ones you value relative to others, and then reframe the question in terms of these value judgments. Anyone can do this for any set of values, even ones they don't personally find important. But what this strategy does is take one subjective question with an infinite number of equally valid subjective answers and turns it into a bunch of objective questions, each with one objectively correct answer. This is how we can discuss subjective topics in a fair, unbiased, objective way. Now this can be a tough concept for people to wrap their heads around, so let me provide a quick, ridiculous example to demonstrate my point. So let's say you've been selected to take part in a race this weekend and are given the choice between four vehicles, a Chevelle, a Lotus, a Jeep, and a Dodge Grand Caravan. Which one's the best? Well, go on. At this point, you're probably onto something if you're thinking to yourself, well, it depends on the race, right? Now this is the natural logical leap that most people take when presented with multiple options, where the form follows the function, where the differences between the choices have clear and obvious distinctions. Perhaps the race is a straight up drag race where flat out acceleration is key. In this scenario, our souped up Chevelle is definitely the best choice. Now what if our track is full of tons of twists and turns? The light and nimble Lotus is likely the fastest here. What if we're racing on an off-road circuit with uneven dirt, gravel, watery sections, and steep inclines and declines? The Jeep is likely our best bet here. Now what if we have to transport a gaggle of screaming first graders safely, comfortably, and most importantly, legally, to school? In this case, the Dodge Grand Caravan might be our only option here. So as we can see, deciding what's best only makes sense within a specific context, given a clear and unambiguous set of requirements. Now, before you simply ask what's the best, take a step back and think about what you're trying to achieve and what things are important to you. Once you do that, answering the question is gonna be much easier. So when it comes to things like bullets, armor, and medical items in Tarkov, this can often be very difficult because unlike in our car example, the differences between the different options available to us aren't so obvious. So let's heed our own advice, take a step back and discuss some considerations. We'll be taking a look at the most common and arguably most important considerations that you should keep in mind when comparing the two, as well as thinking outside of the box and discussing some less obvious, but in my opinion, more important relevant concepts. Let's start with some low hanging fruit. First is price. Now, obviously prices are always changing and depending on if you're buying from traders versus finding them in raid versus buying them on the flea market, these can vary widely. But to keep it simple, let's look at the 24 hour average listing price for unused CMS and Serve 12 kits using the brand new price check feature in Battle Buddy that should be available for download on iOS now and Android over the next week or two. 
Currently, CMSs are about 20,000 rubles, and the Serve 12 cost about 32,000 rubles. So, what do we get for these prices? Well, breaking it down to rubles per slot, they're functionally the same at a, about 10,000 rubles per slot. But if you look at the price per use, the CMS sits at about 4,000, where the Serve 12 is a little bit lower at 2,100. So the CMS is a smaller investment, but it's not as price efficient as the Serve. Interesting. So let's keep that in mind and continue to the next major consideration. CMS kit contains five uses and the Serve 12 contains 15. Now on its face, this seems like another obvious win for the Serve kit. But as we'll discuss shortly, I'd actually argue that this additional value is misleading in many cases, but we'll get to that. And when it comes to medical items, given that they are most often used in the midst of a firefight or shortly after an engagement when you're often at your most vulnerable, one of the most critical factors to consider is the time it takes to administer the remedy. This includes taking the item out, opening up, consuming the item, closing it up, putting it away. The CMS kit takes a total of 16 seconds from start to finish, whereas the serve kit takes 20 seconds. So both take a really long time, but this is a worthwhile trade-off considering the penalties incurred for otherwise blacked out limbs. Blacked out arms will raise the gun slower and shake and sway while aiming. Blacked out legs will take damage if you run or fall, and blacked out stomachs will dehydrate your character extremely fast, which if left untreated can kill you faster than you might think. Now it's worth noting that I did also test the time it takes to cancel the animation, which you can do by left or right clicking, should another threat become present before you're done healing. And they both take about five seconds to button each kit up and stash it away. Man, I cannot wait for the day when you have a bind to cancel these animations quickly and allows you to like throw the item on the ground or something should you need to react in a pinch. Moving on, let's take a look at the ability to heal breaks. Now this one's pretty simple for me. Yes, the fact that the serve can fix breaks is good, but the trade-offs simply aren't worth it for me. Because of the size, I'm unlikely to bring an additional splint with me into the raid, which means if I break a bone but don't black out the limb, I'm going to be using the serve 12 to fix the break, which takes 20 seconds. So given that, for the most part, breaks are a mild annoyance rather than a life-threatening issue, and breaks don't happen often enough to require you know, needing to fix them more than, I don't know, once, twice, maybe three times in a raid, this seems hardly worth it. The only real benefit that the Surf Kit has over the CMS is that it does a two-for-one, but even then using the CMS and Alu Splint is better in pretty much every way than a Surf Kit alone. Using both can be done in less time than the Serve, and in the Tarkov Tetris game, having a 1x1 and a 2x1 instead of a 3x1 drastically increases the options available to us, and the CMS and Alu Splint combo is faster, so in my book, this is another win for the CMS. Okay, now on to the final three, and in my opinion, most complex and interesting considerations. Let's first start with size. Relatively expensive medical items like Golden Star, Stims, and Surgical Kits, like the CMS and Serve, are most often carried in your protector case. These items aren't used as commonly as, say, a car med kit or painkillers, so they aren't typically hotkeyed. And as such, there isn't much of a reason to carry them outside of your Alpha, Gamma, or whatever protector case you have. So, given this context, which is better? If you're a standard edition player, this is a no-brainer because you simply don't have enough space to fit the Serve 12 in your Alpha because it's a 3x1. If you have a beta container or larger, you don't have this problem. So, what should you keep in mind when deciding what to take? My personal philosophy on my protector case is that it first holds my docks case, you know, key bar, sick case, whatever, and that pretty much never changes. Then any additional space is filled with the largest total value possible of any items that I don't currently need hotkeyed or in my rig or pockets like grenades or mags. Now the vast majority of the time this space is occupied by what I call long-term meds like Golden Star or perhaps, you know, a stack of extra ammo. Now during the course of a raid, as I loot and discover more items, I'm constantly evaluating the cost, rarity, or usefulness of these items with what I currently have stored in my protector case. And if any of these new items take priority, I'll replace the item in my protector case, which now exposes the item that was in my protector case before to being lost upon death. Now this is really important because it's not uncommon that I find one or more items worth more either per slot or in total than either of the surgical kits. Hell, most of the random junk you'll find around the maps and in cabinets and bags is worth over 10,000 rubles per slot. 
as you'll need them for barter trades or hideout upgrades. So holding on to those can bring you way more value in your protector case than a used or even unused surgical kit. In fact, given that the serve kit is larger, it's much more likely that an item or combination of items are going to be more valuable than the serve kit and would warrant moving the serve out of your protector case compared to the CMS. Now, not only that, but the fact that it has so many more uses in the CMS means that it has the potential to be carried through many more raids, each additional raid having an increased chance to find a suitable replacement. And what this ultimately means is that I personally find it extremely likely that I'm going to lose the Serve 12 kit with a ton of uses still left on it very often, negating most of the benefit that you get from the increased uses. For me, this is another win for the CMS. Now on to the most controversial and in my opinion misunderstood consideration, the amount of maximum HP retained after the surgery with each kit. Now each time you use a CMS to repair a blacked out zone of your body, the maximum HP for that zone is reduced by a random percent, leaving the zone at a maximum HP value somewhere between 45 and 65 percent. Whereas the serve retains 80 to 90 percent. So for simplicity's sake, let's just say 50 and 90 percent. That's huge, right? Wouldn't you always want to choose losing 10 percent max HP versus 50? I'm going to argue here that it doesn't really matter most of the time. It's not really worth it. So at the end of the day, your goal is to survive more shots. So how many more shots will that additional 40% max HP save you? If I told you that in most cases, the answer is none, would you believe me? Let's compare a few different use cases side by side using my app's health calculator, which I modified internally for demonstration purposes allowing me to simulate the damage calculations for when HP is reduced due to surgery having been done in RAID. Note that I'm working on a more customizable and robust simulation feature soon, so we can all tinker with this sort of thing at any time. Now on the left is a normal uninjured PMC body. In the middle is a body that has the arm repaired once with a Serve 12, and on the right is a body that has had the same arm repaired once using a CMS kit. Let's say your enemy is using a decently common, but still pretty strong round, 545 by 39 BT, which has 37 pen and 44 damage. How different is the survivability of each of these characters? Well, for starters, they will all die to a single headshot and die to two chest shots. All right, now what if the enemy sprays you down center of mass, hitting your chest first, then your stomach, then each of your arms once? How many more shots will each survive? Now, given that the BT round does 44 damage, all of them will die to one more chest shot. How about a volley of stomach shots? Now, in all three examples, it takes four stomach shots to kill. In fact, the only time where the shots to kill difference is meaningful is a situation that will likely never happen having every single bullet hit only the arm that was injured. With BT, it takes 16 more shots to kill in the left arm from full health, the same 16 shots in that arm after using this serve 12 once, and a slightly faster 14 shots after using the CMS. Now it's up to you to determine if that's the kind of use case that you want to prepare for, given all the other things we've discussed. In my opinion, it's incredibly rare that you'd be hit in the arm more than a few times without at least one of those rounds hitting your chest or your head, killing you in one or two shots. All right, so let's look at a more extreme example where your character has healed every single limb twice. Your stomach, both arms, and both legs have been blacked out and repaired two times each. This man's seen some shit and has somehow come out alive. Surely this is gonna be significant, right? I mean, look at the HP differences between each. Full health is 435, 10 repairs with the serve and you're down to 376, and 10 repairs with a couple of CMS kits has you down to 195 total HP. Let's grab another decent common round, let's say M855A1, and compare. Now it's probably no surprise to anybody that a single headshot and two chest shots is still all it takes to kill you, so in those cases there's still no difference. Now let's say you get into another engagement and are instantly gut shot twice. How many more gut shots will it take to kill you? It's going to be six shots to the stomach on the first, five on the second, and two on the third. Now while that three shot difference between the CMS and the serve might seem significant to you, 
try to consider how exceedingly rare this situation is. In order to get here in the first place, you would have had to have five zones of your body fully blacked out, twice each, taken the time to heal 10 limbs, had the ability in this raid to spend over three safe minutes doing surgery 10 times, let alone something like seven to 800 HP worth of meds to heal those limbs back up to full multiple times, get gut shotted twice, and then proceed to be gut shotted a handful more times, all the while during these countless engagements, you were not shot in the head or the chest pretty much at all, let alone had a flurry of grenades thrown at you or something like that. The number of times something like that happens, which as far as I know over thousands of raids has been pretty much never for me personally, is not at all worth the additional downsides that the serve has over the CMS. Can the serve make you live longer? Yes, just honestly not often enough for me to personally find worth it. I'd much rather be sent back to my stash than spend five minutes in raid crouched in a corner stapling my stomach wounds closed. The last consideration was actually one that I hadn't thought of until somebody in chat mentioned it while we were chatting about it one stream last week. Now, I almost exclusively play Tarkov solo, so I hadn't considered the team element. One or two people carrying a serve 12, even unprotected in a backpack, can be shared between multiple people within a raid. It's not unrealistic to go through 15 uses of a serve kit in a few raids if you have a 3-4-5 man squad, and carrying it in a bag is much less risky as a teammate always has a chance to grab it and bring it to your squad's next raid. Now with your team's support, you generally have people to cover you while you heal, so passing around one or two serve 12s between all of you makes a lot of sense. Now in this case, the value proposition changes a bit, but I'd probably prefer a couple serve 12s be shared between teammates, depending on team size of course. Perhaps with a couple people carrying CMSs in their protector cases. So there you have it, my analysis comparing the Serve 12 and CMS kits, and my reasoning for preferring the CMS kit in the vast majority of time over the Serve 12 kit. Now as usual, I hope you learned something useful that you can take with you into your raids. I wanted to give a massive thank you to everybody that's been coming by my Twitch stream lately, even when I'm playing other games like Valorant, to say thank you, spread good vibes and positivity, ask questions, and just generally be a part of the community. Keep it coming, toss the video a like, and let me know what you want to see in the future. I've got a few more videos like this in the works already. Peace.